Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 5th, 2022. Well, my goodness, we had quite a two day rally here, really popping up, changing a few things in the charts, but really not fixing a whole lot just yet. So, what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, let's take note of where we are um, in the market because it is so crazy um, to see the market gapping and moving the way we are. And there seems to be an awful lot of um, speculation that the Fed is going to soon pivot, but my personal opinion if they were to pivot soon they completely lose credibility in what they're trying to do in fighting inflation so keep an eye on this we are still in a downtrend um, here in the chart so as much as we'd like to say oh the bottom is in we, we we want the bottom to be in and i get it i really do but we also have to recognize that one of the first things we have to do to actually have a bottom um, in the market is we need to prove that we can break some downtrends and so far haven't quite been able to do that and you'll notice that we're running into fairly substantial levels of price resistance in the chart so what do we need here well either we need that resting pullback in here that holds a support level and creating a higher low or we need this to push right on through that downtrend hold the higher low and then we start that upside move because one of the things i've been talking about a lot lately in the right way options trading room is that you know we get all of these reports we get all of these things from um, um the institutions and analysts and things like that you know for example you know, nvidia has a hundred percent upside potential uh, okay um well show me that show me that you're actually institutions show me that you actually believe that by rallying this stock and putting in a higher low on that chart breaking downtrends and starting to reverse things to the upside don't just give me the lip service in here actually prove it to me and that's what I'm talking about here when we look at our indexes let's make sure that we get some proof that institutions are actually going to be willing to follow through remember it's not retail traders that move the market it's institutions that move the market because they have the majority of the money and if they're not showing that commitment to hold a higher low or to follow through then we as retail traders need to be pretty suspicious and cautious on how we move forward now, of course, that doesn't mean that we run for cover or we hide or that we can't trade at all. We just have to stay a little bit more on the deliberate and disciplined side of trading following good technical analysis and holding to our trading rules. So one of the rules that I require here is this rally has certainly been nice. It's been a, a welcome change, a wonderful relief to the selling. But it's not going to mean much of anything unless we can actually prove to hold a higher low or break down trends in the chart. Remember, we still have substantial overhead resistance here in price. And if we look at our um, technicals here, moving averages in the chart, we're not improving here either. Um, we've got an awful lot of work to recover that. So first things first, let's get a little price action here that shows that institutions are actually going to follow through with a commitment to the upside before we get too excited and start jumping. One of the things you want to note here is it looks like today we have that possibility that the 200 day will cross down through the 500 day. That's certainly not a bullish chart. And notice that our 50 day moving average here has certainly turned 
um, to the downside. So we still have a lot of proof proving to do before we can get real comfortable that the all clear has been sounded here in the market. If we take a look at the SPY, SPY, very same situation. We haven't taken out downtrends yet. We've ran, ran right into significant levels of resistance. And if you watch that price action yesterday, it was, it was pretty telling in the fact that we hopped up there really quick, which means retail traders didn't get to participate much in that. Um, and then what did we do? We kind of went nowhere. Um, we spent the rest of the day chopping. So there wasn't a whole lot retail traders could really do unless you were already long overnight. So again, technically in these charts, we're not, we're, we're recovering, we're, we're improving things, but we still have a lot to do to prove um, that this is a true bottom or that the bottom is in. Remember, bottoms typically are a process. So for example, this bottom where we push down, big three-day rally, all the way back down to a new low, and then we started higher. Or this bottom, break down, rally up strongly, pull back, bounce around quite a little bit, and then we start to move up. So remember, we rarely see those um, um, patterns where we just zoom straight back to the top side. And with the FOMC unlikely to uh, be changing their position here anytime soon, um, we still have some uncertainties um, to be questioning and to be a little bit cautious of. Let's take a look at our QQQ. Our QQQ, very similar situation. Um, a beautiful rally um, here the last couple of days. Um, we didn't really break through um, or confidently make any uh, changes here in the chart breaking the trend, breaking through resistance levels. So we'll want to watch that pretty carefully. And we do want to keep in mind that technically in this chart as well, our 200 is crossed down through the 500, that 50 is still declining. So we've got a lot of work here yet before we can get really comfortable and say, hey, everything is getting better. And if we look at the economic conditions out there, everything is not getting better yet. In fact, it's going to take some time for that to get better. If you saw that survey of um, CEOs yesterday, most of them think we are going to go into a substantial recession. So um, keep that in mind. We've got some work here to do, a um, lot of things before we can start to recover. And then if we start to see, um, take a look at the Russell. Now IWM is that shining hope out there in the market, the small caps, are the only index that didn't make new lows for 2020. We held up here. And as you can see, we've pushed really nicely. We broke through some pretty significant levels of resistance here. Um, but then we kind of slammed into this one here and stopped just a little bit. And of course, that corresponds with the downtrend. So once again, we still have some major questions here in the Russell, whether or not um, we're going to pick up and, and certainly our technicals in this chart are, are not bullish. Um, notice we crossed 200 through the 500 a long time ago and that 200 is now diving once again to uh, come down there and create a significant price resistance level with that 50 day moving average. So a lot of work, a little bit of just have that little element of doubt before you rush in with your hard earned money. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now, our VIX, I would have thought that with such a big, confident move in the price action yesterday, that we would actually see the VIX break trend, but it didn't. It didn't break trend. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean that a lot of that big pop that we saw yesterday was really nothing more than short covering. And that means folks closing their short positions to capture their gains. Um, because they don't want to take any more upside pressure. And, and that is likely the case instead of a whole bunch of buying going on in the market. So watch that close. Now, keep in mind, we still have some support here that we could hold and we haven't really broken that trend and we have that a um, uh, little bit of bearish activity this morning, um, that possibility that we could push back up. So watch that close. Now, if we take a look at our um, 
T2122. Our T2122 also ran into a little bit of a problem. We went from oversold because we went so far so fast and what I wrote in the blog this morning, too far too fast um, or too much too soon um, is what I wrote. And, and I wonder if we kind of got a little bit carried away here. We, we wanted, we wanted a bullish move so bad. We, uh, we just push it too far, um, too quickly. And you can see we bounced right up here toward that bearish reversal zone. Now this doesn't mean that we can't go in, in um, on higher. If we can get some good, um, inspiration in here to move on higher, there certainly is some upside room here still that we can press on up. But please keep in mind once, once we get up here, um, we have that tendency to pull back. Now we can linger up here for periods of time. So perhaps we could get up in here and linger a little bit and then continue to push on higher. But watch that closely because as we have seen recently, when we get that big shooting move to the upside, that we can very quickly reverse that back to the downside. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then if we take a look at our T2108, our T2108 certainly got a nice um, improvement yesterday. 27% of our stocks at the close of the day um, um, back above their 40 day moving average. That means one of the things that means is that we've got a lot of stocks reversing and pressing up toward their 50 day moving average resistance levels in the chart. So you'll want to think about that. And if you notice right in here, we're pressing into fairly significant levels of resistance. And once again, this very sharp downtrend, we have not corrected it yet. So pretty steep in that move. So still we haven't corrected it. So just take a breath before you rush in with your with your money. Let's take a look at our T2107. Is the same thing is really true here on our um, small caps or T2107, the number of stocks above their 200 day moving average. We've got um, just just short of 25% of the stocks um, pushing up, which is a nice improvement of what we've seen. And the good news here is we didn't take out the lows. Um, on this, but we are pressing resistance levels. And let's remember, we still have this downtrend in play. We still have this downtrend resistance in play. So we've got some work here to do yet before we get too, care, too um, cavalier um, saying that the bottom is in. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now T2101, interesting, um, hooked back to the top side. So that momentum because we kind of shot up early in the day and then just kind of went flat for the rest of the day that momentum shifted back up where this would suggest maybe the bears have that opportunity and they're certainly expressing that opportunity a little bit this morning with a little bit of downside move here uh taking back a little bit of those gains doesn't mean we collapse all the way back down but just that we may take back a little bit of that over exuberant move to the upside as you can see we're looking at an open in here and realizing that this was an 800 point day that's a pretty substantial little pullback that's going on here this morning um, prior to all of our um, um, economic um, um, events that could happen today so speaking of that let's take a look at the calendar one of the things we'll, we'll have to be keeping a pretty close eye on Last couple of days, we've seen the US dollar pull back and that has pushed oil prices higher. And then we also heard that OPEC is looking at cutting production. They're talking about production cuts of a, um, a million to two million barrels a day. Depending on what they actually do in here on that OPEC cut, we could, we could see um, those energy prices fluctuate around quite a bit today. If they shoot on higher, remember, higher energy prices are one of the major factors of inflation. And if we're pushing back up um, because OPEC is cutting supplies, then we're going to have another problem, another shot of inflation coming our way. And that's really going to keep that FOMC pretty stringent here in the market. So keep an eye on that. Um, um, we've got um, the mortgage applications. We know that those have been pretty bearish um, for some time now. So watch that one. We've got an ADP number here this morning. And unfortunately, the consensus in the ADP, remember the Fed wants to see 
jobs starting to come down. Um, ADP employment report consensus is suggesting we move higher private payrolls up by 200,000. That would not please the FOMC, and we might get a negative reaction if that does come in that way. Um, also, we've got international trading goods. That has been one of the bullish things of the market here because of the strength of the dollar. That has been prove, improving um, our trade deficit, so keep an eye on that. We've got a PMI composite number. Remember, PMI numbers are starting to show us recession. And then we've got our ISM services number that will be coming out this morning. And if that's not enough, we're going to get um, the petroleum status here um, today. And then we're also going to hear from another sp Fed speaker after the close. Now, um, as you look forward, remember we've got Challenger um, uh, numbers tomorrow um, coming out. So we're, we're just not done with these um, um, jobless numbers and um, all of these data points and more Fed speakers tomorrow, just a parade of them um, as they continue. They just never seem to run out of things to say. And then as we move into Friday, remember, we've got that employment situation number and it's not uncommon for the market to get kind of light and choppy as we wait for that number because that is the big government number. So keep an eye on that. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar, we have a few charts um, that um, report are reporting, but I only put three of them on for uh, being particularly notable today. Um, let's take a look at those really quick. There's six total companies reporting. Um, Helen of Troy will be reporting uh, this morning and you can see it looks like they have disappointed here this morning, moving lower. Um, so keep an eye on that. Also, um, RPM reporting uh, this morning, and it looks like they have um, had a bullish um, report here, gapping higher this morning. So watch these resistance levels in this chart as it stretches to the upside. So a little bit of mix there. And then um, um, the other one that I put on the list also reports this morning, and that is um, LW here. Keep an eye on it. Looks like a little bit of a pop and drop on that move so far this morning. So watch that closely. Not much else in here to really be that's really too notable for the day um, on those earnings reports. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could click that thumbs up, or excuse me, click that subscribe button and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Make sure you click that bell icon and get people every once in a while say, well, I subscribe, but I'm not getting notifications that um, you've posted another video. Um, make sure you click the bell icon um, on YouTube so that notifies you that you have um, that there's a new video posted. I want to say thank you to everyone that takes the time to um, um, drop comments on the on the video. And I apologize yesterday, I didn't get a chance. I kind of got busy with a morning activity and tr some trade changes, so I didn't get a chance to answer those videos. Um, uh, comments yesterday but I will be back on the case today so thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up and please keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact you need to be doing your own due diligence and be watching very very closely this is a very challenging market you need to understand your risk follow your rules and understand carefully the risks of trading a market like this. Um, it, it's just not for everyone. Let's take a look at a few things here that have been moving around substantially. First off, let's take a look at a few tech companies. We saw Microsoft and Apple and those um, rallying the last couple of days very, very sharply. But what I want to point out is that we're pushing right into some major resistance levels in the chart. We also have downtrend areas here in the chart. So if you're looking for some short, short trades, I would be watching for the potential that some of these companies could struggle here at that resistance and then may eventually roll back over. Now, I'm not suggesting they make new lows, but that they roll back over. There may be some opportunities here in some of the tech sector stocks 
um, because I think one of the things that we're starting to see happen is we're starting to see f um, um, players in the market move more toward companies that are dividend payers that give a little bit more income and things like that in the market rather than some of the techs now microsoft does pay a dividend but it's not much of one so um, keep an eye on some of those tech stocks out there we'll also want to be keeping an eye on some of these alternative energies. Take a look at First Solar. We've been talking about First Solar for quite a while. It finally found that energy to pop out here. So keep an eye on that. If First Solar can hold in this area up here, I would look for more potential upside. A lot of government money flowing toward these solar companies. So keep an eye on that. Other places, I think you've got to look at energy. Energy has surged dramatically. If OPEC does cut production substantially, I think we could see oil stocks continue to move higher. We know as, as winter approaches here, there's going to be some major energy challenges um, around the country, around the world. And um, we know the kind of impacts that will make to our inflation. So watch that closely um we've we're trying to break that downtrend right here if we hold the higher low in here then we have opportunities for upside and and we may have opportunities for upside for the majority of the rest of the winter so watch that closely energy and all of these energy stocks like um uh, Devon, Devon breaking downtrends. Looks like we're getting a little pop and drop here in the pre-market today on Devon, but that's looking um, like it's trying to go. Um, Exxon Mobil making that move up to resistance. Um, um, APA, um, APA surging back to the upside. Um, Halliburton making that move trying to break that downtrend to the upside the other thing that i think we need to be keeping an eye on because it's been pretty darn interesting here recently is that u.s dollar now u.s dollar was popping up gapping up about to here when i wrote the morning report and we've suddenly got this pullback going in here but if the u.s dollar holds on to this trend and continues to move higher if we can hold the support and move on higher then I would expect to see some of those energy prices relax a little bit and pull back. But if it continues to fall, if we continue to see the US dollar shrinking, look for those commodity prices, things like gold, huge surge here the last few days. I wouldn't chase this, but notice we're breaking downtrends. So breaking downtrends, let wait for the rest or pullback and then look for the opportunity that could potentially set up there in gold. Right here, we're trying to test that 50 day moving average as resistance. So again, it's not ready for prime time yet, but quite a, um, a turnaround here in commodity prices. Take a look at silver. Oh my goodness, silver went like a rocket to the upside. So here again, we're breaking those downtrends. Here we are above our 50 day moving average. And now today, starting to see that pullback. If this pulls back and holds in these support areas in here, watch for that opportunity to maybe get long silver and some of these commodity prices. Take a look at DBC. DBC is a commodity tracking ETF. Big surge on DBC to the upside. Got a little funky price action going on here this morning. Um, <clears throat> looking at that chart. Notice we've got a 50 and a 200 day moving average resistance level in here, but we have broken that downtrend at least temporarily. So any consolidation or rest underneath here that finds those buyers, well, this would be a problem for us as well if food prices start to go higher because of a collapsing dollar. So watch that closely on DVC. So with that, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Be safe. Be careful out there. We're going to have a lot of price action moving around, a lot of uncertainty ahead of us as well. So watch that closely. Protect that capital. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. I wish you all the best.